Okay, so the topic that I'm going to discuss today is about the human nervous system. This is in your chapter 1 uh, from 3 book, right? Now, before I start on the human nervous system, all right, let's look at the topic. Now, this comes under uh, chapter 1, stimuli and responses. Now, before we go to the uh, in-depth about stimuli and responses, let's look at the whole picture. That means the human nervous system. Now, uh, in order for a human being, Right, for a human being to produce responses. What are responses? Responses are movement. Uh, for example, reading, writing. And also, there are responses that you are not aware of. For example, responses like breathing, heartbeat. All right, it happens within our body. All right, uh, but we are not aware that it's happening all the time. Now, when we talk about human nervous system, we are actually talking about how actually our body can produce response. Now, type of response we'll discuss later on, but now let's look at the uh, human nervous system, the whole structure. The human nervous system is an important control system. Let's look at what exactly is the definition of the human uh, nervous system, right? So the human nervous system, right, is an important control system. So it's a control system, all right, in body coordination, right? So you need the human nervous system, right, which is this, in order for you to control your body's coordination. Control means here, that means to produce movement, right? Now, let's look at the human nervous system and the structure of it. Right. Now, this is the whole picture consisting of your human nervous system. So, your human nervous system consists of two main structures, central nervous system, Peripheral nervous system. So central means the center, the main part. So the main part, which is the most important part, obviously, is your brain and spinal cord. And then your peripheral nervous system consists of your nerve, two kind of nerves, which we call as cranial nerve and spinal nerve. Cranial comes from the word cranium, which is part of your brain. So, peripheral nervous system consists of 12 pairs of cranial nerve. So, cranial nerve, uh, every human will have 12 pairs of cranial nerve. And also, 31 pairs of spinal nerve. So, here will be 12 and 31. Right? So, this is the whole picture. And this is actually what we call as your human nervous system, the function will be controlling your body's coordination. So what is the human nervous system? It's a control system for body coordination. It controls the body coordination. Okay, let's go to the function. Now, why do we need human nervous system? Number one, detect stimuli. Now, what is stimuli? Stimuli are um, what we call as triggering responses. So I can give you an example of stimuli. Stimuli, let's say uh, you have your uh, five senses. One of your five senses will be your eye. So how will your eye actually see things? So it needs a trigger. So a trigger will be the uh, light. So your stimuli will be a light. So that's called stimuli. So without light, there won't be any uh, responses produced, right? The second one is to send information in form of impulses. Now, why the information must be in form of impulses is because your brain cannot read, all right? Uh, your brain cannot read images. Let's say you're looking at uh, a ball, okay? Now, Looking at a ball, 
okay of course you will use your eye so your eye is one of your five senses now in order for your brain to uh, infer that what you're looking at is a ball what your eye need to do is produce impulses to be sent to the brain so now why how will that impulse be produced is first the light which is the stimuli all right the ball is not your stimuli the light because without light you cannot see the ball so in terms of stimuli it is uh, different for the five senses so for eye the stimuli will be light now once your eye looks at the ball the image image of the ball is sent right in your eye so the image is sent to the eye and your eye will have to convert the image to what we call as impulse so impulse is information which our brain can interpret all right so what is the third function of the human nervous system it has to interpret impulses now which part of the human system is actually going to um, interpret impulse which part you have your brain you have your spinal cord you have your cranial nerve, spinal nerve. so the part that is going to interpret your impulse will be your brain right so that is why we call every part of the human system human nervous system plays an important role in order for our body to produce coordination right and also the fourth function will be to produce responses for example if your eye is going to look at the ball and you need to pick up the ball of course picking up the ball will be uh, done by your hand so meaning that the response is not done by your eye the response is done by your hand so your brain needs to interpret the signal which we call as impulse and send the signal okay to the muscle in the hand in order for your hand to move towards the ball and pick up the ball that is what we call as uh, responses and of course this um, response being produced actually needs the function of your nerve because how is the impulse going to be sent uh, to the muscle in your hand to pick up the ball of course you need your nerve all right so that is why your human nervous system all right don't only consist of one part but four main parts right so the four main parts i repeat again will be your central nervous system which consists your brain and your spinal cord peripheral nervous system consisting of your cranial nerve and spinal nerve so bear in mind four parts work together to produce any form of response or coordination right now let's move on to another part all right which we want to know voluntary and involuntary now voluntary means responses that happens um, by the processes of your brain that means you need to use your brain to produce voluntary responses now if you look at your book there is three kinds of responses here reading book withdrawing hand from an hot object and peristalsis now earlier i said there are responses which you are aware of then there are responses you are not aware of now voluntary responses are responses which you are aware of so within this three of course reading book will come under voluntary response right because you are aware of uh, reading writing walking and so on whereas of course withdrawing your hand from a hot object you're aware 
but then this comes under involuntary because your brain does not need to tell you to remove your hand all right when you touch something hot now what if you need your brain to tell you all right it's hot and you need to remove your hand now this action if it requires your brain to interpret it will take time so by the time your brain interpret for your hand to be removed by touching on a hot object your hand will be already uh, burnt so that means you uh, a human okay will um, already have um, burned the hand burn the hand means of course uh, it's something uh, like for example something that we don't want lah, okay um, in a human body all right now peristalsis happens naturally that means you don't have to tell your brain or when you eat it naturally occurs so everything inside your body happens naturally like breathing peristalsis is movement of food in your esophagus as well as in your small intestine now um withdrawing hand from hot object it is one of the example other example uh, that we don't want our body to have um, you know um, to get hurt all right to uh, get hurt for example will be if you touch something sharp of course you withdraw your hand so anything that uh, needs to protect your body from harm okay touching hot object uh, touching something sharp okay that comes under involuntary which you don't need your brain to interpret whether it's harmful or not so why it is like that is because we want um, actually to avoid injury so any action that our body uh, do or occur to avoid injury comes under involuntary action now let's go to the first part where we want to find out how exactly will a voluntary action take place. Now, voluntary action, of course, needs the brain to interpret, right? Interpret the information. So, here is given handphone. Now, when the handphone rings, of course, uh, in the five senses, that is going to, um, you know, to produce action, the first part is, uh, your ear lah. because of course you need to see the handphone to pick up the handphone but triggering um, your your action all right triggering your action will be actually from hearing okay why because let's say you are not um, near your handphone all right your handphone is in your room and you're far away so when your handphone rings the first thing is you hear the sound so when you hear the sound, that's called your stimuli. So stimuli for your ear will be sound. So handphone ringing produces a stimuli. A stimuli, sorry. Alright, so the stimuli here is your uh, sound. Lah. Okay, what sound is it? A phone ringing sound. Alright, or for example, if I ask you, your mom is calling you from the kitchen. So... What is the stimuli or stimulus here? So the stimuli uh, will be um, sound also. Alright, no matter what sound it is, it can be any sound. Alright, uh, TV sound, somebody calling you, so all comes under the category of sound. Right, so of course for our five senses to actually work, we need stimuli. Alright, uh, stimulus is actually the uh, plural stimuli is uh, what we call it as a singular now when your ear detects the sound all right the sound enters your ear and of course i said that the sound needs to be converted to impulse because your brain cannot interpret sound it can only interpret impulse so there is a part in your ear which we call as an a factor all right uh, a factor or we call it as receptor receptor is a part of your ear that will change the sound to impulse 
and send to the brain. All right, once your brain interprets what needs to be done, it will send the signal back to the E factor. E factor will be your muscle. That means your hand, because your hand is going to pick up the phone. And then only will you produce the response. What are you going to do? You're going to pick up the phone, answer the call, or send a WhatsApp. So remember, the part for voluntary action will be the stimulus. A factor, a factor is where you need to change, all right, um, to the signal to impulses, all right. And then your brain will interpret the impulse, send the impulse back to the effector. Effector will interpret the impulse and produce an appropriate response. So that is voluntary action. Right? Now, involuntary action can be divided into two. One we call as a voluntary involuntary action. Involving medulla oblongata. The medulla oblongata is part of your brain. Now, your brain consists of three parts. Medulla oblongata, cerebellum and cerebellum. Now, medulla oblongata will actually control okay, involuntary action such as heartbeat, breathing, peristalsis, secretion of saliva. Alright? Whereas, your spinal cord will... Uh, actually control reflex action. Reflex action as uh, what I said just now is actually action to avoid your body from injuries. Alright, touching hot object, withdrawing your foot when you step on something sharp, sneezing and so on. So anything that involves um, injuries will come under the control of spinal cord which is not your brain. Alright. So, for example, let's say here you have uh, action where you touch something hot. So, when you touch something hot, alright, the impulse will be sent, alright. Now, what we have there is a receptor, alright. A factor will actually interpret it to impulse or change it to impulse. So, something hot touched by your skin, your skin is your... Uh, one of your five senses so hot it can detect so once your skin detect it as hot it you under your skin there are receptor which will change all right the information of hot becomes impulse sent to your spinal cord and your spinal cord will send back information uh, to your hand to withdraw your hand so it doesn't need to go through your uh, brain spinal cord you know it is along your backbone okay so it's faster it goes to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord it goes back all right to um, your responses uh, to produce your responses okay what is going to produce the response is your effector all right you need to understand a factor change okay changes the signal to impulse and the one interpreting or uh, going to produce response will be your E factor. So A first, a factor first, then only E factor. So that is the part of involuntary actions. So in 1.1, 1 .1, uh, that is what uh, you need to actually know. Human nervous system, type of action, voluntary, involuntary, the importance of human nervous system. All right. So you need to know uh, that in 1.1. Uh, 1. All right. So that's all for uh, the topic on 1.1. 1. 1. I hope you understand. All right. About the human uh, nervous system.